Welcome back to a debate panel here at His Health Summit. .pt. We're speaking about health, communication, technology, and the challenges of the present and the future for all of us. We will speak now of communication in times of pandemic. In the last year, new words, new expressions are part of our lives. And it's about that we will be speaking with our two guests. I'll present them. Piotr Spiritsand, head of cabinet of the Secretary of State of the Prime Minister. Welcome, Pedro, and Anna Davo, responsible for communication for the Ministry of Health. Welcome. Pedro, I'll start with you. Last year has been a surprising year for all of us, the country, the world. What are the challenges uh, on communication and sharing of information? Well, uh, good afternoon. I, When I was thinking about this subject on a panel, communication in terms of pandemic, I remember a, f a sentence of Garcia, Garcia Marquez in a, s a parallel subject, a love in times of cholera. He said that wisdom is something that knocks on our door when we don't need it anymore. And OK, uh, there's a lot of lessons to learn, but we had a huge challenge uh, learning by doing, uh, step by step, leading with unforeseenable uh, aspects that none of us were, was pre were prepared to do. Uh, the uncertainty was total. Uh, nobody had lived a pandemic in so long, and none of us, uh, when I say none of us, I mean the citizens, uh, us, as our experienced individual, but also the, the experts where we, uh, who, to whom we direct our trust, uh, but also the teams in government and the deciding people in, our, in controlling, preventing, and mitigating the effects of the pandemic. I would say that all of this it brought a lot of challenges. On one side, the uncertainty. On the other side, leading with a crisis or a challenge that is um, broad spectrum. Uh, understanding the virus, if we could see it, would be easier. And a set of phenomena around it, scientific, scientifically demonstrable, that would be visible, that would be easier. On the ter in terms of communication as well, it was necessary to ask uh, the citizen to adopt certain behaviors. It was one of the few times where we had to communicate to all the, the population, independently from who they were, a need that was transversal, a message for different publics, but also different messages. It was evolving throughout the time, and things complicated themselves when we had hybrid messages. It's easier to say, stay home or remove all the masks. It's more difficult to say, now we can uh, go back to certain normality in certain areas. So it's different perspectives of reality, a certain normal or what is serious, uh, sometimes with terminology that is legal, that is not easy access to everyone. Uh, so it doesn't uh, correspond to the social patterns that people have. And then the security among the risk, our small world, our small vision, me as a, a youngster, I'm not so affected as some someone that is older, uh, older than 60. So the challenge of communication, it was something that was transversal to uh, hold the countries, not just with the pandemic situation, but with the idea that we need to communicate for everyone. And sometimes in a different way, in mo different moments, we had several pandemics, not just one, in terms of communication. And we had to communicate. It's not white or black. It is uh, 50 shades of pandemic. And it demanded a huge effort from the government, the central government, from the area of health, uh, where Anna will be able to speak a lot more, but w in which the challenge uh, was uh, work done in network and continuous. Anna Davo, 
Uh, Pedro referred uh, to an invisible virus uh, complicating all reality and everything that implied in terms of replies. But uh, on the other hand, on the government, uh, political entities, the decising people, uh, we aimed for transparency. So is that what you try to achieve? Good afternoon. What we tried to, when the virus uh, appeared, with all the lack of communication and information we had at the time, we did not know what would happen. Uh, what we tried, not just politically, but technically, because with the entities that the Ministry of Health has, we tried to create messages that somehow would correspond always to the truth. What we tried throughout 16 months of pa pandemic was never to lie, communicate with transparency, with the truth. And I think sometimes we had moments where we had to step back. And that's what we, we did uh, without a problem. We communicated with transparency. And there wasn't here great innovation in terms of how to communicate. What we did was intensify the ways of communicating. And we were able to create differentiating mechanisms, even on the European level, with our communication. As, for instance, the meetings of Infarmed are the example of everything that we've been doing. And then other types of communication that we were able to explore. There were also uh, the press releases. Many times we were accused of not communicating the best way. But this was a challenge that we tried to do uh, throughout the management of, pan of the pan pandemic. Sometimes better, sometimes worse. But I think we were able to pass the information in the most correct way to everyone with all the doubts arising and with the structural importance that was to enlighten the ones behind. And we used the networks, the social media, uh, with creating more interactivity with people in a, in a direct way. Pedro, we spoke about social network and technology as an ally in this context, in the perspective that we aim to uh, take the information quicker to people. But this new strategy is a communication. Maybe they're not new, but we had to implement them faster. What strategies of communication are essential in the context of crisis? I would say that we have the need to communicate massively, uh, to speak to everyone, uh, meet them where they are. So going uh, th through the media, the trans traditional media, uh, advertising on TV, newspapers, radios, and TV, um, locally, regional as well. But on the other hand, we thought we needed to innovate because in re recent history, a decision from a meeting of the Council of Ministers has so much impact in what people may or may not do in tomorrow in their lives, in their activities, in where they can go. And so uh, knowing this importance of communicating in well, uh, we decided to be proactive. We created a site. Uh, Sam's on that was a tool uh, known to all Portuguese people. Then we uh, developed a mobile application for it. And in one site, we decided in the logic of trying to communicate clearly and objectively to congregate the rules, the legislation, the monitoring of this situation, epidemiological situation, and the KPIs, analysis of each region, so people could follow up the evolution in their own region. Also, guides for uh, remote working, because it was something new for many of us. And all these information, also the supports to families, to companies, all condensated in this application and this site for people to know that in one-stop shop logic, all the information they needed was there. And uh, I would highlight as well, I, uh, OCDE, uh, last year in their study, innovative responses for a pandemic, 
uh, highlighting Portugal as the most innovative country with 19 uh, innovation um, against uh, the UK with 11 innovations uh, to have a relationship of scale. The way we communicate, the government was considered as a highlighting measure to be followed. And this was complemented, as Anna was saying, with the need to try to go to the several networks, platforms, uh, partnerships done. And this is not something normal uh, to happen so fluid to local um, regional, all the alerts to be uh, divulged immediately by the transport uh, companies, by the universities, by schools, by distribution companies that are, were still working. And I believe that we were learning as we went along that to communicate and communicate uh, throughout the pandemic um, that still is going a uh, year and a half we had to try an approach that was less uh, feelings-based to something more reason-based. Uh, we understood that working with the fear, with the guilt, and even uh, with empathy, on the other hand, it was not enough. We needed to rationalize, we need to explain clearly but wisely uh, every rule, uh, corporeal, visible, rationally, and in an objective way. Anna, Pedro launches a question that we never forget or should never forget. We have people, human beings, occupying political positions. They need to manage all the information and all the capability of decision, but also the emotional aspect. That is something very important to bear in mind. This management of emotions uh, needs to be done and well, done well in order for the communication to be effective. In our position, uh, this management of emotions needs to be left out. We need to think of the emotions of others. And so what we try to do throughout these uh, months, uh, hard months, uh, they look like many years, but they're not. These months, uh, they're being very heavy on all of us. It's important also to highlight from the point of view of communication with the reporters, for instance, we live here another uh, problem. The newspaper people, the reporters, they were not in their uh, rooms, in their stations. Uh, they were remotely. And so complementing what Pedro was saying, not just calling our public entities to all these process of communication, but also the communication agencies were involved. They were brought with public figures that had a very important role to explaining behaviors. I think this was essential at the beginning of the pandemic. And then later on, uh, in, when we went out of lockdown, uh, another type of communication involving these agents and ha being able to have this communication in network, which is crucial. Um, to draw from uh, a year and a half of pandemic, I think the most important thing to me was the communication in network that we were able to articulate with the health institutions, with the government, and with the social media as well. Several challenges in such a small amount of time. A lot of questions, uh, replies, not so many. Another issue that Anna was saying about is has to do with social media as allies of technology and reaching other publics, especially the youngsters. Uh, there's uh, surely there's a danger when we speak about social media, fake news, disinformation. How do we manage all these? Bit? Is it a danger in face of a crisis? Uh, I believe that the subject of fake news and social media needs to be faced as technology in general. Technology is neutral, I would say, and then as such, it could be an ally tool, but it can be an enemy as well. I believe that this pandemic was an experience in itself clear of, of both sides.
for technology. On one hand, we clearly were able to reach many publics that do not follow the traditional media or they do not follow the news reports, uh, typical traditional ones, but their very presence in the social media is very high. And so with another type of innovation, whenever we um, release new measures from the Minister Council, we try to put them in synthesis, uh, summarized frameworks that had a huge projections according to our studies in the social media. And in that sense, uh, it was a d direct dialogue, a discor direct discourse that sometimes we weren't able to uh, do in traditional media because from the decision to the communication, the briefings, and here it was immediate. Uh, and that was an advantage at the same time as it was easy and it was speed in the transmission of our mes message. Also, transmission of message that were not uh, real. Uh, people were trusting messages coming from people informally, but they, they did not correspond to scientific evidence. And this is, was a problem and it still is. And the importance to bring the experts and the communication being transparent. Yes, giving voice to the experts in health it was what we were able to do. But I would like to mention as well the importance in terms of fake news to communicate directly without intermediaries. Uh, that fact allows. Uh, to have a proliferation of fake news. We don't know what the objective, the goal behind is. And that is a problem for those of us on this side. We, when it, in terms of social media, we were able to do some disclaimer in, times, in terms of this types of situation. And we tried to explain, explain that that was a fake news and to go against it in a clear, objective way. That's what we did. Exactly. Uh, we tried before the emergency of fake news phenomena regarding the virus, the measures, and everything, every dimension of, of the pandemic. We tried to have this educational approach, whether it was in the sites, the facts we had, trying to demystify a few issues. And in the idea of the opening, educational opening, uh, with the people from InfarMed, uh, when we say it's rare in the world, because the briefings, normally the experts' briefing were addressed to the ministers or political decisors uh, involved in InfarMed. But here, for by the prime minister initiative, we decided from the first moment that the experts should speak to everyone. Uh, social partners to all the citizens and not just the politicians and live feed through for all television stations and to complement our uh, in intent of communication was never giving assurances on what we did not know the importance of communicating the truth and to show that there's always a factor of uncertainty was essential for people on the other side to understand that we were working uh, with dynamic information that could change at any moment. Uh, sometimes in one day we had to change the information more than once. Do you feel that at the beginning, the few first weeks and months, and you mentioned that that some press releases originated a few polemic uh, issues because we were living uncertain times. But do you feel that at the beginning it was difficult to conquer the the trust of people to make them understand that sometimes or many times uh, you didn't have all the information? Was this difficult to manage? Yes, I think it was uh, for all of us because we were dealing with a lot of uncertainty. And uh, now we have more knowledge, but the challenge was trying to pass. And the what we tried to do from the beginning was try to give the message in serious messages that many times they had doubts among them, even for us, but to pass on the security to the others. Uh, 
communicating transparently uh, with objectivity was essential for the people listening to us, even when we're dealing with the unknown. Pedro, we spoke about the meetings of Infarmed. We mentioned earlier that was uh, the first time in Europe opening these meetings and share what the experts considered for the with the population in general. Are there other examples? Portugal was able to, in some way to uh, overcome and be the first in line in the way they did politics in this uh, complicated age uh, time. Yes, it's difficult in truth. As we were saying, the pandemic, uh, it was, uh, as an experience, was a release for all of us, for all the governments, for the companies, for all the actors worldwide. Uh, it was a, a premiere, so to speak, in terms of communication. And it was funny to communicate and to dialogue with other teams of communication, other governments. And I would say, humbly say that we were OK. We did OK. If it was on the level of using technology through a site, an app, uh, just for you to have a notion, or people have a notion, the backstage was created in three days. And so from root, uh, it was something. and. Then we created really quickly the app and the and others uh, deriving from it. And the idea that uh, the news, the advertisement, the rules, the the lockdown, the going out of lockdown, uh, not to be given a, in a hard way, but with a context, with a educational presentation from the prime minister directly uh, from those that decide the one at the end of the day the uh, person in charge for everything not just with a closed uh, communication but with frames with um, images uh, explaining why we had to follow this why we had to take this decision why in certain regions uh, a message was one, and for other, uh, the message was another. Uh, hybrid areas that came along, that idea that we are not taking any decision, relevant decision, without having a presentation and an explanation from the prime minister with this PowerPoint. Uh, published then or released for everyone, but I believe that it was innovating as uh, the idea of calling uh, stakeholders, private stakeholders, the social media, uh, television stations to be aid us in publishing and releasing these messages. This was uh, innovative. To finish, Ana Davo, it's true, uh, time flies and we have uh, to finish. What are the lessons learned from this year and the pandemic for health and communication? Public health are all of us. Uh, we cannot work alone. We need all of us working together. Uh, earlier, we were saying that experts had a key whole role in the work done, but we had other situations that are interesting uh, proliferation of spec experts uh, that uh, came on television and this uh, contributes also to this information. The lessons learned from the pandemic and still to come because it's not over uh, to communicate. We need a society, we need the reporters and all the stakeholders from the government, from the ministry, to ensure an effective communication. I would like to uh, note this. Uh, we also created in the technical uh, dimension the COVID-19 
com uh, site with so much information that people wanted that sometimes it crashed because people were looking and uh, working in network is key. Thank you, Pedro Espirito Santo, uh, head of the Secretary of State's Cabinet, and Ana Davo, responsible for communication for the Health Ministry. Uh, we were left here with um, the aspects of what has been done in the last 16 months for health in our country. Thank you.